Hello everyone and welcome back to our Burton Abbey England DNA series. Yes, we are in a playoff race. We've got the opportunity to get into the playoffs. And in today's episode, we're going to play two really important games and go through our three-month review of the players' attribute development. Welcome back, everybody. Yeah, starting off with Sam Hughes, then. Let's get straight into the player attribute development. I mean, over the last six months, he's, he's going backwards in a little bit, really stabilizing, but he's definitely not improving anymore. So this could be a sign of things to come and definitely something to watch out for for Sam Hughes, especially when we do the end of season review. And let's see how it ends up at the six month review at that point. But not great. Mitchell King. Now, Mitchell King is looking really good, isn't he? In fact, I can probably get out of the way here, can't I? That's probably better, isn't it? There you go. You see everything much easier now. That's Mitchell King for you. So Mitchell King looks like he could be a really good player for us. And especially even at championship level, which I'm really pleased about. I wasn't sure if he'd get there that fast, but he definitely has. Mitchell King looks like a really good player. And he's perfect for that sort of side of a back three. If he can just get his dribbling up to about eight or nine, that would be perfect. And his passing vision looks like it's going to make it as well. So I don't know. I'm quite happy with his development so far. Oshelaja. Yeah, I mean, he's going to be gone at the end of the season. So Oshelaj will be the next player, I think, to leave because Mitchell King's really taking his place in the squad and probably then some. And he's just not going to be required anymore. So this will be Oshelaj's last season with us. Connor Shaughnessy is continuing to like sort of tick on a little bit on his attributes, which is nice to see. Okay, Borthwick Jackson last six months hasn't been really that good at all. But I mean, he's I like keeping him because he's a left-footed centre-back, which is good in some games. And he can play his wing-back in an emergency. So I like to have him for those reasons. But he'll probably still be with us next season, but he'll be more like... He's getting more like Oshelaj where he's coming towards the end of his time, I think, with the club. But there he is. Tom Hamer still continues to improve slowly in his sort of right centre-back role for us, which is nice. He's good. He's a really solid side of a back three. I think it's perfect for him, that is. Because as a wing-back, as a full-back, doesn't really have the express pace or the dribbling and crossing right for all those type of things. But on the side of a back three, he's perfect. Centre-back in a back four isn't really good enough in the air. So I think the side of a back three suits him and Mitchell King really good because like I said, like I said at the start, I would adjust the tactic to the team. But right now, I think the team is really suited to a back three, which is which is brilliant. I don't know what's happened to Lassie Fairweather, there, but apparently he's improving now all of a sudden out of nowhere. So there you go. Bobby Cameron's going through one of his spells again where he's improving in, in a lot of areas. So yeah, his agility has gone up again. I don't know. He... he He's, he's one to watch, is Bobby Camwer. I'm just waiting to see, is he good enough to be a good backup? Or is he just going to be no use to us whatsoever? And he sort of fluctuates between the two, depending on what sort of period he's going through in his development. So, one to watch, though. Terry Taylor, last six months, just slowly improving again, which is nice to see. Continues to tick along, and hopefully he'll get another few attributes up as we go through the next year. Kieran Gilligan's had a really good last six months, as you can see here. Mentally, really across the board, really improved. Physically, almost across the board, he's improved as well. Technically, actually improved in quite a few areas. Dropping in some, but like long shots, free kick taking, penalty taking, crossing and corners. Apart from me, crossing could do with, you know, stagnating or getting slightly better. But the rest of them, I couldn't care less about for him. So he's improving on the things that he's actually working on training, as we can see here. He's probably not doing too much aerial work and he's not doing too much penalty taking, free kick taking, that type of thing, right? So the things that he's got downward arrows on, I can live with. It's a slightly similar story to Sam Heller with him as well. And Sam Heller, I'm trying to slowly introduce him to the first team. But as you can see, because we're in the like, race for the playoffs, it, it's hard to play him too many games. But what I found is that if Mitchell King plays in the first team with John King, we can that's fine. We can deal with that. If John King, Mitchell King and Sam Heller all play in the same team, I feel like that's when we get, we get beat on a regular basis. So it's, you know, if we get knocked out of the playoff race, Sam Heller will play every game for the rest of the season. And if we don't, I might try and save him for next season. Because I'm pretty sure if we do get to the playoffs, we're probably going to lose in them anyway. But uh, I still want to give us a good chance, right, if we can get into it. it you know, if, if, you're in the, if you're in the playoffs, you've got a chance. You have got a chance. And that'd be really entertaining to see us as a, for an episode to see if we can do it in the playoffs. But in any case, either towards the end of this season or at the start of next season, as long as we're in the, as long as we're in the championship, Sam Heller probably will start to start games for us on a much more regular basis. He needs to get his acceleration, agility, and dribbling up. I'm looking at those three areas. So in his case, I might change his individual learning plan to just focus on those three things next season. And maybe he just does those three things throughout the whole season. Maybe we just do that for him. Because he needs he needs to work on those things, I think, to play in the first team in the role that he's going to be playing in. Johnny Smith continues to slowly improve again, which is nice. Charlie Lackin just reaches peak, hasn't he? Keeps going. Davis Keller done. Slowly improving. Yeah, he's, he just gonna stay as he is, isn't he? Joe Powell's on a bit of a decline. 
I'm going to keep monitoring this. It's been a bit of a slide for a while, like two, I think, reviews in a row now. If this was a real-life Academy player, I think you'd have to have like a little sit-down chat and figure out what's going on here. It was consistent improvement for multiple reviews in a row. Now we're seeing back-to-back -back slides. I just figured out what's going on here with Joe Powell. But in the game, we know it's probably because he's maxed out on his on his uh, PA, I would have thought, because he, he has improved quite a bit from where he started, even with that. So there we are. Lewis Malt. Yeah, going backwards physically, he's about to be redundant, actually, because William has replaced him as the as the main striker in the team. Well, backup striker. And here is the success story off camera for the last few months is William. Now, he has been fantastic, and he's already looking like a level where he could easily compete at the championship in our tactic at the very least. Like, if we, if we played wingers, I wouldn't say he's going to play as a winger, but as a striker in a two, in our three, five, two sort of system, he can do it. And looks pretty good doing it. So, yeah, scored a few goals. Really good backup wire. Came out of nowhere, really, for me. Like, when I first started to say, I did have a look through all the current youngsters at the club, and I concluded that none of them were going to be able to play for us if we got promoted. And I was proven wrong by a couple of players, which is good. Victor, small improvements for Victor still. Still scoring goals, still being our best striker at the club. And here he is, 18 goals in 33 games. It is John King, and John King's last six months have been still incredible. There he is. John King is still improving all across the board. I'm so impressed with him. He does go through spells where he doesn't score for like three, four, five games in a row, then scores multiple times in a row. So that is slightly annoying. And um, I think he's just quite, he's quite poor in the air for a big striker. Like his strength's only eight and his heading's only seven. Don't reach 14. So yeah, something to monitor, but he is, he is improving still across the board, which is important. I mean, technically he needs to improve, but like, again, tackling's going down. Don't care about that. Penalty taking goes down. Don't care about that. Passing would be nice to have. Uh, long throws is going down. We don't care about that. Heading, we do care about. If I could flip the callers and crossing for some heading, that'd be nice. But I've not shown you Cameron Gilbert and William for a couple of times now, purely because they're just not improving anymore. They've actually gone backwards a bit and they're probably never going to play for us now. So that's why you stopped seeing them um, in my in my sort of reviews. How am I on number 10? I mean, if we're in League One, you have a potential i think maybe he's only 16 so don't forget he has got he has got time and a chance to improve but he's not really done much in the last year so like look at that it's not good enough is it like just looking at the the players development it does seem like players have got a better chance of developing in the right into the moment if i leave them there for longer just, just looking through the players there so i might move him back actually to the under 18s and let him play there and see if he can get um some more development in there. Right, and that is it. You're pretty much buying up today. We're going to play against Cardiff in a few days' time. So when we come back, I'll definitely play Mitchell King. There's a chance that Sam Heller plays as well. Okay, I'll see you in a few days then for the Cardiff game, and we'll see how we get on. If we can win these two games, we'll definitely be in the playoffs, I reckon, and we could be in for a chance. And then for the last episode, we'll come back for the Wigan-Fulham games and then do the end-of-season review and conclude with the attribute development review as well. So I'll see you in a few days for the Cardiff game. Interesting, I just got a uh, I just got a report from my assistant manager about Sam Hellam. There you go. It's all of a sudden he's going through a little little new phase of development and look at that. So looks good, doesn't he, all of a sudden? It's is it the arrows sometimes make a difference, but yeah, that's good to hear, isn't it? But you can see here the last three months it's telling me here. He's come leaps and bounds. The squad's general character has had a positive effect lately. So um he's given match experience at a higher level than before, that's always helped as well. Okay, I just asked for them to upgrade the youth level and give me another coach. And they accepted the coach, rejected the youth level. Now, I'm going to make sure I have more money in the back next time. So it looked like they were quite willing to do it, but it was just a money issue. So the next time that comes up, I'm going to make sure I've got like a good 2 million in the bank balance, which should be possible now we're going to stay up again in the championship. And we're going to do pretty well. So I'll remember to, I'll, I'll wait until we've got good money next time I request that. Here we go then, give me this card if your team is going to be Garrett in goal with Mitchell King, Hughes and Hamer across the back. Mitchell King's a starter now for me. Lacking and Caledon wingbacks because both, uh, because, um, sorry, Smith is out with a suspension. Heller and Taylor are going to play as our two pivots with Powell as the 10. John King and Victor up front. So you've got three academy players in this team. As I said, when I normally do this, we lose. We are at home. Let's see what happens. Assistant manager says, recent praise justified okay. And we are underway. So we're looking out for Preston's result. Preston are the most realistic team for us to catch. They're currently at home to Peterborough there. It's going to be early highlight here for Cardiff City. They're going to make a throw in down the right-hand side. They're going to retain the ball back across. And we win it with Powell. Powell plays into John King. John King takes a few touches. He's got support with him. He's going to use Lackin. Lackin plays. Oh, tries to let Lackin just about misses. They're going to have to go long here, surely. We press them easily. Oh, that was... It was a good press. They had to play a risky pass to get out of it. And they slowed themselves back down. They could end up losing this. So they're getting behind. We're going to get to this. Oh, Mitchell King's made an error. And what defended by Sam Hughes. Round of applause, Sam Hughes. Mitchell King, that wasn't very good from you, mate. 
Corner, Caledon, whacks in the far post, Hamer, out to Victor, he takes a shot on goal, it's cleared away. What's the second part of this highlight going to be? Victor has it, plays out to Caledon. So I, just, I literally just paused it, we're going to continue right now, I had, a, I had to quickly sneeze. And it's gone into the box and they clear it, clear it away anyway. Goes back to Hamer, Caledon. Hamer plays it across the pitch, does he? Oh my goodness, that was close. Mitchell King survives with it, well done. Heller to King. Oh, what a goal. All three academy players linking up. You had King into Heller, Heller into the other King. And what a goal. That is the first time we've seen a combination of all three academy players. Look at this. Mitchell King plays it into... He just survives. It gets it into Heller. Heller plays it straight into King. Nice. Uh, was well, pattern-based football with a left foot strike. What a goal. I wasn't expecting that. 1-0 to Burton Albion. Okay, we will say things are going well. Unless they don't get complacent, actually, because... We twice nearly gave them a good chance from our our mistake rather than them creating anything. Highlight for Cardiff here. Keller Dunn's won it along with Victor. They're going to travel with it. Plays it across to Taylor. Back into Victor. Back to... Across. Powell. Oh, he's missed it over the bar from there. Highlight here. Cardiff play it short. They're going to build their attack. They play it across the pitch. They've got a 2v1 if they want to use it. They've gone inside for some reason. I don't know why. Lackins won it though along with Powell. We keep winning it with two players on the ball at the same time. Mitchell King has it. Plays it a terrible pass. Mitchell King's not having a good game, to be honest. Defense. I mean, he did well for the goal. But like, yeah, generally he's had a pretty poor game. And they go through and they miss. They should have scored. I'm going to switch him to like... Oh, should we go to the middle? Maybe Hamer. Let's get Mitchell King on his natural side so he can just travel out with it. Cardiff are going to play out from the back. That was dangerous. We could have won that if John King would have been... Uh, ready for it. They're going to try and beat our play on the outside. They do. We've got three players there. Surely one of you can stop this cross. They force it back. And we're going to force it backwards again. Come on, strikers. Can we initiate the press now? Now, come on. Come on, Jonky. Go across. Where the hell is William? Get yourself on the back line. They're going behind to our left centre-back, which is Hamo. He's giving a penalty. So, whoever I put on the left-hand side has done badly. If they score, I'm going to take probably Mitchell King off and put on Shaughnessy. Yep. Yeah. Okay, I've gone to our attacking version of the tactic with like two wide centre-back attacks and my Segundo Volante is on attack and on ultra-attacking mentality. That's like my like small stepping stone to go attacking without changing the actual formation of the team. And it looks like we're going to fall just short and get a draw, which is a shame. I think that's a little bit from playing all those youngsters. I mean, like Mitchell King did well in the goal, but twice let them get through. I'm sure Heller didn't help at times in that either. So I think for the next game, I'm going to take out Heller. I'm going to put in, I think, cool. They're going to have to play again this game anyway because we've got the same players that was before, but plus Hamer's now out, suspended. So I'm going to play Sean Lassie left centre-back and play Mitch King on the right of the back three and see so how he gets on out there. And I'll see you in a few days then for the whole City game. Incidentally, Sean Barker, our new head of youth development, has just done his pro licence. He's actually improved as a coach as well. His termination, like the youngsters, have both gone up, I think. His sacking, I think, has gone up. He's, he's gone up, he seems to run as a coach quite a bit, so that's good news for us. Okay, here we go then. Assistant manager says... Recent praise is justified, okay. I'm not sure like these are... Uh, I'm not sure like these team talks recently. And Hull City are top of the league, by the way. I just noticed that. So we are playing top of the league at home with three academy players in the team. Let's see how they can get on. Cardiff were quite far down the league table, I forgot to mention. And Preston did draw their game at home to Peterborough. So the situation is exactly as it was. We're still seven, they're still six. And we're still one point behind with a game in hand, I think it was. Uh, but it's a shame we could have gone ahead of them. John King's going to win that. No, he's not. We're going to win this now. Taylor's got it. Plays it surely into power. Power looks at John King ahead of him. He does. He plays him in. Goes through one. Goes through two. Shoots. Oh, it's just wide. He has got reasonable, I think, for weaker foot. So he's pretty good on his left. And he's happy to shoot on it, which is nice. Keller Dunn throws it to John King into Taylor. Cuts on his left foot. Victor shoots. It's blocked. It's cleared away. This could be an attack for them now. They're going to dribble out our back line. They play it through. They're in. They're going to play it across. Can we get up to that? Hughes heads it away. Don't forget Mitchell King is on the right. This Oh, we're going to win this. John King coming in. Shake counter. Powell is there. Powell's everyone use him. We lose it. Win it back. Heller. Lacking. Powell. Taylor. Taylor plays it through to Victor. Sure, he's in. He's going to score. He is. What a goal. Come on. Burton Abbey are on the charge. We have got a chance at the playoffs. One or the Burton. I mean, I thought the attack had gone. John King won that, by the way. So John King and Heller linked up there. The move progress. Taylor with a great ball through into Victor. Goes through 1v1. Finishes it nicely. 1-0 to Burton. We are currently, ladies and gentlemen, in the playoffs. We're in the playoffs as things stand. Highlight for Hull City. Far post. Don't forget they're top of the league. John King on the counter. Two. Oh, we nearly had a counter. We nearly had a counter. It's going to be a highlight for them. Can we survive it? It's the only question. Can we survive? <gasps> we're going ourselves. Taylor. Taylor's got it. Plays into Lacking. Lacking. 
tries to skin his man. Tell you, uh, lacking, mate, you're too slow for that. Let's all get carried away here. And they're going to play through us. They're going behind early. They're going to get through. Mitchell King, and what are you doing? Good defending from Shaughnessy. Yeah, while Mitchell King lacks a little bit of acceleration, a little bit of maybe um, concentration, because he's young and hasn't developed himself in his attributes yet, he needs to get out of those situations every now and again. Like in the last game, we got away with it mostly. They scored eventually from one, but go on, Mitchell King, this is you. This is all you. Don't, don't. No. Luckily, it was offside. That's what I mean. The errors that he's going to commit, we need to get away with, really, early on. That's the thing, right? You have to play through your mistakes. When you younger players, and you younger players in a stressed environment, in a, in a results-based environment, you're going to have to be willing to go to take the rough with the smooth. And they're going to go through spells of developing well, not developing well, playing well, not playing well. It's going to happen, right? Especially when you're targeting areas of coaching into one area of the, of the pitch at a time. Well, so things are going well. Okay, they're going behind. Mitchell King plays it back to the goalkeeper. Wax it a bit early for my liking. Yeah, we're not going to get to this. They're going to play through the right-hand side, our left. We look okay set here, actually. Oh, I should have got tighter there. That was anything they had on. Stay tight to him. Good. That's it. Oh, we nearly got it off him. Oh, they can play through us now. But we nearly had him on the press. Lacking. Back to the goalkeeper. Now spread so we can play short. Don't go long. Good. Can we get the ball to the right wing back? There we go. There he is. Oh, it was there. Oh, Taylor, what are you doing? I'm blaming Taylor. for Taylor's at fault because he should have played it to the wing back. Uh, I'm going to switch him and Heller because they're both opposite footed right now. So they've got right on the right and left on the left in the two pivot rolls anyway as they head it over the bar. Highlight for whole city. They play it on the right hand side again. I feel like the, we look like an equal team. We look like an equal team. We look just as dangerous. They look like they're, they're maybe slightly better than us in terms of possession and they're going to create the odd more chances. But we look like a threat on the counter. When they get into this position... They either go through us, but if we do win it, we do look like a good threat on the counter. They got through us again there. Going to make some changes, I think. I'm going to make Victor play the whole 90, because I keep taking off when he's tired. I'm just going to send him in for the whole 90 here. Same for Terry Taylor. I'm going to take Heller off, because he's not playing great. And let's play Kieran Gilligan there. Let's make the only change to be that for now. Okay, won the ball deep. Sam Hughes plays it long to John King. So 2v2 here. John King takes it down, plays a great ball into power. He's going through on goal. He's too far to score from there, surely. He does. He tries to shoot, and they go long. Is there a second part to this highlight? Mitch King wins it. Goes up to Taylor. Taylor plays it in a bit too early for my liking again. I think long term we have to tweak the tactic a little bit for the uh, for the passing. The reason I've not done it yet. Oh, and they've scored. Going to take off Keller Dunn and put on Bobby Cameron. So we can change the two wing backs. Not going to go defensive. I'm not going to go attacking. I'm going to just stay as it is for the last 20 minutes. Highlight here. Whole City have the ball. They play it back to their back line. They're going to retain it across. I might actually change Victor, thinking about this. I just want somebody fresh who can initiate that press a little quicker and be ready to go for those balls a bit quicker and head over the bar. Yeah, let's do that. Let's put William here. And let's just do that as a final sub. Okay, highlight late on. Fairweather throws it into John King. John King plays it to Taylor. Taylor back into John King. Goes through one, shoots from distance. It's cleared. Kamwa Gilligan loses it out. No, they're going to counter on us here. Oh, they've played it backwards. Oh, they're going to retain their sight. They're going to keep going here. Play it in behind. Fairweather's going to get to this so easily. Turns with it. Plays it to Hughes. Hughes has options. Goes in behind to John King. who's onside. He's going to get there first. Is he? He does not. Does not. But the highlight continues. They go straight in behind. Garrett, what are you doing? Oh, no. Oh, dear. This isn't good. Sean, as he tries to get there, doesn't. This could be terrible news for us. And it's, wow, we survive. These games are entertaining. Because teams don't respect this at all, they just absolutely go for us. It turns into these unbelievable matches. And they have it. 1-1. What an entertaining 1-1 draw that was. Let's just say unlucky to the boys. Uh, two draws in today's episode at home. I think that probably shows you we're going to fall just short of the playoffs because those are the kind of games you need to win. Well, the first one more than the second. Like, I would have expected if we were going to be in the playoffs, that would be three points out of these two games instead of two. Winning the first one probably, well, losing or drawing that one. But I think, like, we're unlikely to get points here. But but we won't know until, uh, until we play those games anyway. Right, to conclude the episode then, let's look at the current state of play. So we are currently one point off the playoffs with a game in hand. Very crucial, with a game in hand. That is our current state of play. We have just we just played bottom of the league and top of the league and drew with both of them. So I don't know what that tells you. Um, we're inconsistent and young. That's what it tells you. Let's get forward a little bit. Before we end the episode, let's do the youth in youth intake's gonna be pretty soon. Let's come back for the youth intake and we'll finish on that. Then the next episode can be just about the end of the season. So the last the next episode, the last episode of this season will be the last two games, the end of season review, and the last attribute review. 
of the season. So I'll see you in a few days and weeks for the youth intake and let's see what we get. Here it is. The youth intake is here. And as you can see in the corner, excellent intake. We have got some good players coming through the in this year's intake. And the only big difference really is that this is our second year in the championship, obviously, but also changing the head of youth development. So let's see who we managed to get in. So starting off with Tom Keenan. Tom Keenan is an attacking midfielder to play as our 10. And I think that's exactly what he's going to be. He's probably as good as we can hope for at this stage, having that sort of number 10 profile of player. So he's going to spend the rest of the year in the 18s, but he looks like he could be quite good. I mean, I think that he'll develop his physicals okay. His dribbling's already at nine. That should improve nice and easy as well. And he's already got off the ball. His flare's 13. Like, he, he looks quite good. He looks, like he, could, he looks like he could improve to be the player that we need him to be. The only thing I don't like is the fact he's got dictates tempo, but... We'll try and move that later on. Aled Harrison is our new goalkeeper. Now, he looks pretty good as well, doesn't he? He looks like that he's even better than the, the finished one from last year. So what I'll probably do is, is the two current backup goalkeepers we've got, I'll probably slowly let them go. I think he could be our number one pretty soon. His positioning is already eight, so that should get up to 10 pretty soon. He's got handling. He's got reflexes. I think he's going to be the one for us going forward. So I'm quite happy with him as a goalkeeper. Brendan Hughes as our box-to-box -box central field player. He could play as a 10 as well. I think with that work rate, already that acceleration and pace early on, he could be either a box-to-box -box midfielder from the sort of right CDM slot. Um, he could play as a 10 or he could play as a right wing back for us in any of those positions. He's got a bit of everything. He's got a bit of aggression to him as well, which I like. So Brendan Hughes, that's another good player. Ian Evans, apparently he's a striker. He could be a pacey and behind striker for us longer term, or he could play as a wing back. I'm not totally sure yet what to do with him. He's a little more raw than the other two players, so we'll have to wait and see. Ben Abbott is a pacey winger. Again, he'll probably be moved into wing back and play as our backup wing back for us longer term. I mean, he could be a pacey behind striker as well. All he's got is pace, but it's nice to have at least one of those in the intake. To be fair, Ian Day could be one as well. He could play left wing back for us. Being left footed is nice. And again, he's got a lot of pace for a, for a player coming through. And he's already got 10 crossing, which is really, really good. So if he can improve his dribbling in particular, he could be a good left wing back for us. See, and it sounds ridiculous looking at that, right? Because you look at that and go, wow, Jack, he's just nowhere near championship level. But you're sort of looking at two years of development in the attributes that you're looking at specifically. And I know what he'll be improving on, on the sort of, well, not only the, the team schedule that they do, but the individual one as well. His positioning is awful. I think for a wing back, at least seven is the bare minimum I'd want for my wing back to have, but... He looks all right. And that is pretty much the whole intake. So, or at least the players that we're going to be signing, I would have thought. Um, yeah, so all I can say is a massive thank you for your support on the series. Um, I know a lot of you are still watching this. There's over a thousand of you that watch this every episode, regardless of when it comes out, etc. And my aim is to try and get these out every, every three days, sometimes every four days. Sometimes it's a bit slow, like uh, if things get in the way, but because it's just, because it's three months between each episode, but I still try and get them out, you know, two to three a week is, is always the aim. And uh, yeah, going forwards, I think by the time this one comes out, there'll be a lot more regular again going forwards. There's a couple of times where it's like every four days, but it'll be back to back to normal after after this one. So next episode, then we're going to do the last two games of the season. If we don't go into the playoffs, then we'll do the end of season review and review the attributes. If we do go into the playoffs, I might then turn it into one long playoff special kind of episode um, where it'll be those two games plus all the two or three playoff games that that follow if there is any after that. But we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens going into the next one. All I can say is a massive thank you for watching and I'll see you all next time.